How do you convert this to set operations? You did this last time, Heather, right? Do you remember? What's it at the same as? L1 is a subset of R if what? Think of this as implies. So if it was A implies B, it would be not A or B. So it would be like not L1 union R equals everything. I'll write this out. Not L1 union R equals everything. And that's the same as as the complement equaling nothing. And that's the same as L1 intersect the complement of R equaling nothing. L1 is a subset of R. Here's R. Here's L1. L1 is a subset of R if the intersection between L1 and R complement is empty. Okay? If there's nothing that comes out of here. You can make a Venn diagram. Maybe it's easier to see than the discrete math way. But these two are equivalent. What is this? R complement, is that regular, context free, not context free? What is it? R is regular, so R complement is regular. L is a context free language. We talked last time that you can intersect a context free language with a regular set, because you only keep track of one stack and the states just become products. So when you intersect a regular set with a context free language, this becomes a context free language. And this ends up being a problem that is checking whether a given context free language is empty. And that you can do. So keep your mind open to these problems. It's very easy for someone who does these a lot to convince a beginner that a problem is undecidable when it's really decidable, and that a problem is decidable when it's really undecidable. You have to be very, very skeptical. Don't believe what anybody says, even if they're your friend. <laughs> Nothing I said in this lecture was actually true. No. You can trust me during the lecture. <laughs> but, but as far as you really should be very, very skeptical. You're going to read things now that's going to be on the cusp of, yeah, I think I'm getting it, but if somebody threw a monkey wrench in, it could squeeze by. And try to be very, very, very harsh with your critique of when somebody's giving you an argument along these lines. These things can get very tricky. Dimitri's philosophy about this, he tells me, he goes, when things are finite, everybody can get it. That's how he talks. Everybody. It's no problem. They get it. But when things are infinite, that's just, it's just, you know, you get confused. And I never thought about it that way. To me, everything seems confusing unless you think about it for hours and hours and hours. But maybe he's right. Maybe just when you get into this world of the undecidable and the infinite, you feel like you're walking a thin line. So be very, very careful. Don't feel you have to get vague. Everything we did today was completely constructive and completely checkable step by step. We did it fast, we did it intuitively, but there's nothing lacking in rigor with anything we did. And everything we showed as undecidable is really an undecidable. Everything we just showed is decidable. You can write a program to do it. All right, so this is the bridge between context for grammars and Turing machines. We'll start with Turing machines next class, the next level over. We'll talk about Alan Turing's original paper when he described his motivations behind what makes a Turing machine a Turing machine. Try to give you a sense that intuitively a Turing machine is like the programs you write. It's an unrestricted form of computation, just like the programming languages you use. And it pushes us up another level. All the sets that we couldn't get before, now we're going to be able to accept them. The only sets that we can't accept now are the things that no computation can accept, are the things that are undecidable. The only things that are out of our frontier now are these undecidable things. And I wanted to do the undecidability now because I think it's more important to see it now. Later on, it's going to seem more magical and diagonalized and weird. And y you need to see the connection to context-free languages now rather than come back to it later. Um, OK, so let's quit here. And any questions, I will answer them after class.